Hi gang, Jade Hamilton here and today as well as continuing our story Ella on the Outside by Kath Howe I'm gonna do a couple of tags well a few tags the first is Teddy Bear Week which is with Suzanne's babies the second is <clears throat> Tiny Reborn Tuesday, which is Melamore Nursery's tag. Um, the third is Teddy Bear Tuesday, which is with Linda's Romper Room. And the fourth is Toddler Tuesday, which this week is hosted by Cena at Cena's Dolls and the theme this week was overalls, sweaters, jackets and anything sort of autumnal um, and for that theme I've got my little one of my little autumn bears this is Toya, Toya Amber and she's a bear for all, hugs for all seasons, sorry. Um, autumn builder bear that I found on Vinted for eight pounds. And she is dressed in this lovely little outfit. Um, Jay at Jay Dolls UK would love this, I'm sure, because I know she loves denim and rainbows. But yeah, Toya's got on this lovely little overall, uh, dungarees overalls set. It's made of a very soft denim and it's got a cliqued on and embroidered on rainbows and hearts and little patches and flowers. And underneath it, it's got a a very fine knit sweater, which ha jumper, which has red, blue, purple, very pale mint green, and white stripes. It's a newborn size. I think it's originally from Next. But I got it from a shop on eBay. And she's also got her little bib on, which has got little squirrels all over it. She's absolutely gorgeous, is our Toya. She's got these beautiful amber eyes and this variegated orange fur, which reminded me so much of Toya Wilcox back in the 80s. Where are my 80s music fans at? Um, that I had to call her Toya because that was the only name that the name that suited her best. If you haven't subscribed to Linda at Linda's Romper Room, Mel at Melamore Nursery, Jay at J Dolls UK, or the four ladies that do uh, Suzanne at Suzanne's Babies, sorry. All the four ladies that do Toddler Tuesday, which is Renee at Renee's Reborns, Suz uh, what am I, Suzanne? Her sister Sam, sorry, at Reborn Love Babies, Mandy at Man Mandy's Cuddlebug Nursery, and of course Cena at Cena's Dolls. Please, please do. They're lovely, lovely people with lovely, lovely babies. They're all full of fun. And they all bring different things to the community. And now that we've done the first chunk of our video, let's get on to the meat of it, which is our story, which is Ella on the Outside by Kath Howe. As per all videos where I read, all copyright goes to Kath Howe 
and to our publisher which is nosy pro i own absolutely nothing whatsoever make yourself comfy grab yourself a hot drink an extra blanket if you're chilly um and i will get the story up and i'll see you very shortly bear with me guys I'm so sorry. I know it's a bit of a pain to watch me wrestle with technology. <laughs> but I will try my best to make this quick. Here we go. Right, we're on chapter 19, which is called A Friend for Tea. Dad, have you stopped writing to me? Are you cross with me? Please write to me again. Ella, kiss, kiss, kiss. On Saturday, I told Mum I'd invited a friend round. And on Sunday afternoon, Molly came. I texted Lydia. You have deleted the photo, haven't you? I will explain on Monday, Ella. I sent the message twice. I didn't know how the visit would be. Molly was so quiet. What would we say to each other? The bad feelings about Lydia and the spying swirled inside me. Start again with a new Ella. I didn't know who Ella was anymore. I just knew I felt so bad about Molly. When our doorbell rang, Molly was on the step in a brown tracksuit that looked too small and I felt strange bringing her into my house but she seemed really excited. She looked at the star charts Mum had made on the fridge while we had a drink. I am trying hard not to fight with Jack. I am trying hard not to scratch my hands or rub the backs of my knees against hot surfaces. I am trying hard to be polite. I am trying hard to look after my new phone, collect it from the office and not gloat about it to Jack. Signed, Ella. What happens when the gold stars reach the end? Molly asked. Mum will let me choose something. Like a present. Yeah, but we're always fighting and Mum keeps unpeeling my stars. She doesn't unpeel Jack's though. <sighs> Molly kept lightly touching things, the plates along the windowsill in their bright spotty 
the plants, sorry, along the windowsill in their bright spotty pots, the tea and coffee canisters. Your house is very smart, she said. We passed by the lounge with its big fluffy sofas. Jack was on the computer by the window. Worm, he said, without worm, he said, without turning round. Worm yourself, I slammed the door. That was my brother. Do you all sit in there? Molly asked as we went upstairs. Not often. Mum's always working. But if you watch a film we do, come on. Molly hung back in the doorway of my room. I like all the colours, she said. Come in, I said. Can I sit down? Molly gazed around at the two large posters on my walls. One of elephants at sunset and the other of clowns. The clowns was from Jack's room. I'd used it to cover the space left by Operation 13, being all torn off and pushed in a drawer. How horrible to think of all the ideas I'd had, pretending to be a police inquiry. I wished I could give Molly a present, make everything better. I like the red ladybird, she said, picking up my furry cushion. I thought of Lydia holding it, sitting right there on my bed, making me tell her. If I had a bedroom like this, I'd never come out, Molly said. I laughed. Molly laughed too. Have you always had bad eczema? She asked, staring at the bottles and creams by my bed. Yes, I said, but sometimes it's worse. Mum's making me try out some new ointment. Molly smiled at me. I only noticed you had it, you had it a few days ago. Really? Will it go away? I don't know. You probably think people are looking at it when they aren't really, she said. Mum called us down for tea and we all sat round the table. Mum had made one of her strange new recipes with lots of yellow, red and yellow peppers on the top. Jack said, yuck, under his breath and Mum shot him a furious look. So tell us about your family, Molly, Mum said, Molly's face filled with dismay. What's that, Toya? What's dismay? It's when you're really worried and upset about something. Because Molly's really worried about Ella's mum asking about her family because then she might ask questions and Molly's worried that, you know, if people know how poorly her mum is and how bad things can be sometimes at home they might get social services and people involved so Ella's trying to cover for her a little bit there's just Molly and her mum I said quick Molly's face filled with dismay sorry she looked at me there's just Molly and her mum I said quickly and her mum's always busy. Mum grinned. I know that feeling. Even though Molly was an extra person for tea, somehow the kitchen seemed quieter with her in it. Jack whined. Why haven't I got a friend round? There's a bar in the middle underneath the table, and if you aim just right, you can stamp the other person's foot off. We're always doing it. Today, Jack kicked my foot and I stamped on his. And Molly just silently ate. Now you two, that's enough, Mum said, loading salad on her plate. You had Sammy yesterday, Jacko. There's no one to play football with. Jack whined again. I'll play, said Molly. 
Her smile lit up her face. Will you? asked Jack. Mum's always busy and Ella hates football. I went to stamp his foot off again, but Jack had already got up to clear the plates. Jack never cleared the plates. Mum's meal was even weirder than usual. Even those little curled up things that looked like rice but weren't. Mum told Molly the whole recipe. It's nice to see someone who loves their food. Ella and Jack can be a bit quicky, a bit picky. You need to watch the quantities of garlic in this one, she said. And don't fry the onion, sweat it. Molly's got a rabbit, I said. Jack's mouth fell open. A rabbit? How old is he? How big? What's his name? He and Molly disappeared outside with him just going on and on asking about Nelson. I went out too. Molly was running up and down the garden, winging the, winning the ball off Jack and hammering it into the goal. I was goalie for a while. Then I wandered away and sat on the bench. Molly looked like a giant playing against Jack. Her legs were so long. Goal! They shouted each time one of them scored. Sometimes when Molly tackled Jack, she would lift him right off the ground and his legs would still be bicycling and they'd fall on the grass, giggling and tickling each other. I might as well not have been there. I watched, I sat, I kept watching them, thinking, he's horrible, Jack. How come you're, we're playing with him? Jack's really fun, Molly said when the game is over. You're lucky. I don't have anyone else. Where are we? Jack's really fun, Molly. Jack's really fun, Molly said when the game was over. You're lucky. I don't have anyone else. We only spoke about her mum once when we were sitting in the garden on our own watching a squirrel raiding the bird table. What does your mum do all day? I asked her. Before she got ill, she listened to the radio, sorted through my dad's stuff. Do you think your mum might like to open a shop? There must be valuable things in the piles, mustn't there? I said. Molly sighed. I don't know. I just wish she'd get better and make some meals and stop crying. The squirrel was hanging upside down, calmly turning a nut in its claws. I was glad there was something to watch. I didn't know your mum cried, I said. Molly bit, Molly bit her lip. Well, she does. She can't help it. How horrible to be crying all the time and not be able to stop. If Jack and I fought and he cried, mum always took his side, even if the whole fight had been his fault. 
He only had to switch on, switch the tears on and the stupid big sobs and she would make us both apologise. Then Jack would stop like turning off a tap and Mum practically never cried. She sniffed and sighed and said you had to move on. Like when Dad got taken away. I don't want to talk about it, was all Mum would say, staying strong and busy. A grown-up who couldn't stop crying sounded like a nightmare. But your mum is getting better, isn't she? I said. She just needs to eat more. I brought I bought loads of medicines, Molly said. She looked at her watch. I'd better go now. Can I come again? Of course. I watched from her, her from the door as she sprinted home on her long, lanky legs. While I soaked my hands that evening and rubbed in my creams, I thought about Molly Gardner, the things she'd said, her quiet, sad ways. She talked about eczema as a small, annoying thing. It wasn't that she didn't care, she just hadn't noticed. Maybe she was right. Maybe other people didn't really notice much either. Lydia had made me feel miserable about my eczema. But being with Molly made it seem like just a part of life. I wondered how Mummy's mum was today in her gloomy house. Maybe she was up and dressed already. Maybe Molly was having tea with her and they were both listening to some music on the radio. Lydia would understand that I'd changed my mind when I explained about Molly's mum tomorrow. I'd find her before anyone else. I'd make everything all right. Chapter 20 Alone Dear Dad Mrs Reynolds saw me give some chicken to Smokey and she said, He knows which side his bread is buttered, that cat. But it was chicken, not bread. I think she means Smokey has an easy life. But it's not easy for birds. Half an hour later he caught a little bird under the ca under the tree and he wouldn't let it go. Each time he did a l he did a little flap he batted it with his paw. But when we tried to take it away from him it hissed he hissed so he died. Mrs Reynolds just shook her head and said, It's a cat's way Jack cried and cried. I really hated Smokey just for a while. He's such a nice cat, so why is he so mean? Jack said, if Dad was here, he'd have saved it. You haven't answered about the money. Is that why you've stopped writing to me? Please write to me again, even if it's just bore about boring things. I won't mind. Please, Dad. Love, Ella. I was going off early for school one the next day to find Lydia, but when I came out onto the step, Molly was waiting for me with her bike. Can we go together? she asked. Mum smiled. That's fine, Ella love. Just go across the recreation ground and keep off the road. I got my bike and waved goodbye to Mum and Jack. Inside, I started panicking. How could I talk to Lydia when Molly was with me? I wanted to make things all right. They nearly were. I dashed it to Willow Glass while Molly was changing her reading book. Lydia was on her own on the carpet. The photo, I gasped. You, you have deleted it, haven't you? Lydia smiled up at me. Of course not. I froze. But I asked you to, I said. I should never have taken it. Well, it's too late now. Well, it's too late now. Lydia said calmly. I stood there, reeling. Lydia, you can't show it to anyone. Molly's mum's ill. It's not funny. She's a real person. Well, I think it's funny, but... Lydia's laugh chimed out. 
and Sophie Will and Rachel and Immy. Hilarious. You sent it to them, I said. I said definitely not to. Lydia grinned her horrible smile. You're not as brave as I thought. This isn't brave. It's just wrong. How had I ever liked Lydia Sheridan? She looked like a monster to me now. A cruel monster. She swatted me away as if she was swatting a fly. Criminella was really the right... That was really the right name for you. Or Evil Hand, Ella. That would be good. Because that's all you do. Scratching your hands. I stood there. Evil Hand Ella. Little bullets piercing me. Moving in and in. No one had their phone with them in the classroom. I had to wait all day. I had to sit next to Molly listen to her, eat my lunch with her, all the time the truth burning, the picture I'd taken sent from phone to phone. In a hot panic I waited, watching Lydia, watching the others. Who would Lydia sent my photo to? I had the worst thought, what if Molly saw it? We said we'd cycle home. She didn't talk to anyone else. I had to keep her away from the others at the end of school. I called out to Molly that I'd find her by the bike shed and dashed to get my phone the minute Mr Hales let us out. When I got to the office, a crowd of milling parents and children were all busy by the window asking the secretary questions. The air was full of complaining and shouting. Little kids with scooters had come in. Infants were being collected. I stood in the queue for phones. Come on, come on! I wanted to shout. I asked for my phone. Grabbed it. Giggles around me. Sophie. Rachel, Immy, they had picked up their phones too, switched them on. I had to get out. Immy wandered right in front of me, staring at her phone. Hey Ella, have you seen this? Looks like a clown. Looks like a crazy grey clown with rat's tail for hair. With rat's tails for hair. I had to get away. I pushed against the crowd. Murmurs of invitation now. I rose. A gap opened up. I came to find you, Molly said, coming through the gap towards me. Molly! Immy dropped her phone, and Molly bent to pick it up from between her feet. She looked at the screen. She stiffened, looked again, stared at me, then slowly handed back Illy's phone. Immy stared at Molly. Then at me, her mouth dropped open. Molly turned, pushed her way back through the doors, disappeared. I cycled to Molly's house. I tried her front door, no answer. I jumped on her, I banged on her gate. Please, Molly, you must let me explain, please. Molly's voice, when it came out, when it came, had a terrible cold calm about it did you take that photo in my house molly lydia told me to do it you sent it to her was it for a joke the fury in molly's voice was unmissable unmistakable imagine if it was your mum you're trying to look after her and you ruined 
I'm trying to look after and you've ruined everything. You don't care. You're just selfish. Now everyone will know and they'll take her away. Or me. I should never have trusted you, Ella. But I didn't mean for this to happen, I sob. Go away. I don't want to know you. Molly said, you are a bad person. I wish I'd never met you. Chapter 21 All Kinds of Stubborn Dad, when I do a thing, bad thing, sometimes I wish I could start again. I wish you were here. Why did you have to go away? Everything would be all right if you hadn't gone away. I don't think I'm a photographer anymore. It was a stupid idea. Ella, kiss, kiss, kiss. When Mum came to get me up for school the next morning, I told her I wasn't well. When mum came to get oh sorry. When mum came to get me up for school the next morning, I told her I wasn't well. Mum's cool fingers rested on my forehead. She frowned. You're not hot, she said. What's wrong? I'm just quite ill, I said. I closed my eyes and lay very still. The cool hand went. I peeped out. Mum had started picking up my trousers and socks. Ella, I can't take time off work. I've only just started. And Mrs Reynolds did lots of extra days over half term. She had my uniform on the end of my bed. You'll just have to go in and have a rest when you get home. I'm trying to look after you and Jack. You have to be a grown-up sometimes even if you don't feel great. She was at the door. How about a pizza at the weekend? A huge sob rolled inside me. I wish we'd never come to this house, I said. Mum turned. There's no point wishing things like that. Her voice had a dangerous, angry mum waiting in it. Up you get, young lady. None of Lydia's group spoke to me at school. I didn't care about them anyway. I didn't care if I had to work with joking boys or with Bryony. Anyway, Bryony was the only girl who had no idea what was going on. The only important thing was that Molly was off school when Mr Hales called her name out. There was a hush and someone said, maybe she's tidying her room and, the cl and my class laughed. And I felt bad. Everyone must know about this inside of Molly's house now. I sat by myself in the playground by the railings where Molly always sat, sketching in her notebook. I went to art club on my own. Lydia didn't come. I kept thinking of the mountain maze and a lonely, sad girl wandering through it, so worried about her mum that she didn't dare leave her. 
taking photos just made me think of the horrible picture I'd taken. What if one of the teachers saw my photo? Molly was right. I was a bad friend. I was a liar and a cheat. I remembered when they took Dad away, the quiet in our house, and Jack wailing in the night and clinging to me, asking if Mum would go away and leave us too. When I got home with Mrs Reynolds and Jack, I felt glad to do homework and read and not think about the mess I made. Jack couldn't wind me up. Each time or said something mean, or when he took the last biscuit, I just said, Go away. I don't care what you do. He even threw a duvet down the stairs, and it landed on my head. I saw his face, full of glee, but I just rolled the duvet up and carried it back upstairs to the cupboard on the landing. You're no fun. Jack, you're no fun, Jack wailed. Mrs Reynolds offered me an extra biscuit. You look like a wet weekend, sweetheart. I felt the tears start in my eyes, sniffed and wiped my nose on the tissue she handed me. Do you want to tell me about it? she asked, laying her cool, dry hand over mine. Have you had an argument? I sniffed and gulped. Kind of, I said. Girls can be very unkind, she said. My tears spilled over then. The unkind person was me. The tears spilled out then. The unkind person was me. She patted my hand. Now, now, it can't be that bad. It is, I gulped. I did something so mean. I couldn't say any more words. Then make it right. Apologise. Life's too short to let these things roll on. Mrs Reynolds' face was full of concern. Can I tell you something? There's all kinds of stubborn. If you know you're in the wrong, you should always say sorry. My husband, my husband could never bring himself to do it, bless him. If we had an argument, he let it run on for days. But it does no good. I've tried, I said. She won't listen. Mrs Reynolds smiled. I wish she wouldn't smile. She didn't understand how bad this was if she could smile like that. Keep trying, she said briskly. Now, how about peeling some carrots? I thought we'd make a casserole for your mum. She's a wonder, all those hours of she's putting in at work. I thought of the, li the lists and rules on the fridge and how mum made me feel safe. I knew she got cross and she didn't have much time to spend with me and Jack, but I didn't worry about her. I thought about Molly. She must feel as if life might go wrong any minute. She didn't have a mum who wrote lists and sorted everything out. I had to try again to say sorry. Mrs Reynolds was right. I had to make things better. Chapter 22 In the Maze Again Dad, why don't you write to me? While Mrs Reynolds was shouting at the TV, I let myself quietly out and out and went down the road to Molly's. A faint light was still on in the, in the upstairs window. The rest of the house was dark. A light was still on. A faint light was still on in the upstairs window. The rest of the house was dark. I tried the back gate, locked. I took the route over the fence, half climbing, half falling over the top. I tried not to think of Molly's furious face. Face. I went inside and 
weaved my way through the piles, waving over webs around round furniture, not stopping this time. Upstairs, I pushed the bedroom door open. Around the sofa, drinks, plates and cups lay scattered. A smell like curdled milk hung in the air. I know you don't want to sit Molly's mum. Molly was sitting beside her mum. She turned and her raggedy black hair fell over her eyes. I know you don't want to see me, I said. I just came to say sorry. Just go away, Ella. Molly's voice wasn't angry, more far away. She stroked her mum's forehead as if she wasn't thinking about me any more. I listened to the coughing. The first time I'd spied and heard coughing must be three weeks ago. Molly's mum had been sick for ages, I realised. The woman's face looked bluish grey. The dark circles under her eyes looked like hollows. Her hands flopped, grasped at nothing. She definitely looked different. When she breathed, her breath seemed to be in little gasps. Last time I came over, she wasn't like that. And wasn't that just how Grandad had sounded when he was really ill in hospital? The sweet, sick smell filled my nose. What if this illness was serious? I remembered Mrs Reynolds saying there was all kinds of stubborn. Molly was a stubborn person deciding never to talk to Lydia. What if she decided her mum would get better with the medicine from the co-op and stop to that, stuck to that idea too? I will go. I'll do whatever you want, Molly, but I'm worried. Can, you, can your mum breathe all right, I asked. I remembered Grandad gripping my hand, the rasping noise of his breathing. Molly, my granddad sounded like this when he was really ill. He had nurses all around him and machines checking him and he was in the hospital. Molly's face was full of fury now. Mum's not that bad, she just needs to eat, get strong. Molly's mum had a bout of coughing, small, dry, hacking sounds. What if you're wrong? What if she needs experts? Just go. I don't, I know you don't want your mum to leave the house, but I think she could be really ill. She could die, Molly. You don't know anything, Molly thundered. Molly's, her mum's head hardly moved now as if she didn't have the energy to even cough. Her eyes rolled with a kind of far away, grass, glassy look. My whole body was shaking. Please, Molly, we need to call an ambulance. A huge tear rolled down Molly's cheek. I can't let them take her away. I put my arms round Molly and hugged her. We have to help her, Molly. We have to do it now. Molly pulled away from me and sank down to hold her mum's hand. She did a tiny nod. I pulled out my phone and dialed. Which service do you require? A voice asked. Ambulance, I said. Please, can you send an ambulance? Number 13, Ash Grove. I left them together and walked downstairs to meet the ambulance out in the crisp evening air. Maybe I was wrong. Well, if I was, the ambulance people would tell me off and say I was wasting their time. They would go away and I'd get in trouble. I'd explain, but for the, for the first time in a long time, I felt like me. I rang home. 
Mrs. Reynolds, I popped up. I pop down the road to check on my friend and they're sending an ambulance, I said. Whatever have you done, Ella? Mrs Reynolds cried. Nothing, I said. It's Molly's mum. She's really sick. Please will you come? Jack knows where. I stood by the gate where the ambulance would see me. I heard the siren from far away. When I saw the flashing light, I waved my arms above my head and the ambulance stopped. Two people in green suits sprang out. There's a lady upstairs who keeps coughing. I think she might be really ill, I told them. I didn't go inside. I heard them explaining to Molly, Molly at the kitchen door, saying, We just want to check your mum's all right. A few minutes later, they came dashing out and collected the stretcher. It took them a long time to come out again. There were clashes and crashes and furniture moving noises inside the house. Two figures appeared coming down the road towards me. Mrs. Reynolds robbing, wobbling along, gripping Jack's arm. The door banged and the ambulance people appeared, carrying the stretcher between them. Molly's mum had a mask on her face and Molly walked beside her. Molly climbed inside the ambulance and looked, looked out at me. With a, a face so miserable I had to look away. This is it, she seemed to say. You have made them take my mum, Ella, Ella Mackay. You know. I've not walked so fast in years. Mrs. Reynolds said, appearing beside me. She did, echoed Jack. She hardly used her stick at all. Mrs. Reynolds bustled round to the door and spoke to the ambulance people. Then the doors slammed with Molly and her mum inside. Can you tell me about it now, love? Mrs. Reynolds said, patting my arm, putting her arm round me. I'd like to understand. Through my tears, I told her what I knew about Molly's mum. She watched me gravely. Well, you shouldn't be too hard on yourself for calling the ambulance, she said. They suspect the poor lady has pneumonia. You probably saved her life. Chapter 23 The Long Dark Car Dad, I keep remembering. I can't stop it. Molly's face staring out at me. The slam of the ambulance doors. It made me remember when those people took you away. A long dark car that isn't our car. I can smell the inside car seat smell, even though I'm outside on the street. The doors slam closed, clump, the voices stop. He's in the back, the passenger seat is empty. Two people, a man and a woman, on each side of him and a driver. That's because he needs a person on either side so he doesn't run away. That's how you know he's a prisoner and not just a person getting a lift. Dad is sitting very straight in the middle, Dad's head facing forward, not turning. On his knees, the carrier bag he brought downstairs. He doesn't wave. I wish he would wave. I wish the two people would turn and talk to him. He could tell them about us, about me and Jack. I've got a girl and a boy, he would say. Don't keep me a week too long. I need to get home to them. Mum doesn't get up. She sits in the lounge with a straight back, staring at the window. She doesn't even say goodbye. The headlights are on, their beams jutting out across the backs of all the parked cars. The smooth swish of the car pulling away. When Mrs Reynolds and Jack and I got back home after seeing the ambulance leaving, I didn't want to talk to Mum. My inside twisted. 
Sylvia tells me you've been upset about your friend. What's happened, Ella? I couldn't lie to Mum. Not after today. Not now. My eyes welled up. I... I... Another girl, Lydia, told me to spy on Molly, I said. Mum frowned. What do you mean, spy? Find out things. Lydia made me watch Molly's house and take photos and then I took a photo inside and found out her mum was really ill. Oh, mum, it was so wrong and... and Mum took my shoulders gently, staring into my face. I don't understand, Ella. How could another girl make you do something like that? She, Lydia, she said she'd tell other people about Dad. Mum took a sharp breath. She knows about your dad. You told her about Dad. How could you? Ella, how could you? The sobs came louder, bigger. I sat down on the sank down on the bottom stair. Lydia asked lots of questions until I told her that day when she gave me the party shoes. Uh, she'd worked out that I had a secret, and she saw you and Jack, and she went on and asked, just went on asking, "Is it about your dad?" And I told her, and I'm so sorry. I curled away from Mum. I'm so, so sorry. I couldn't help the words coming now. I can't forget about Dad. I can't pretend he's not my Dad. I know you want to, don't want to talk about it, but he's always in my head. Shuddering sobs shook me. I had no more voice left. Oh, Ella, I heard Mum saying. I've been so stupid. How awful. I didn't understand, love. And then Mum's arms were round me and her face burrowing into my hair and hugging and hugging me all and all the sadness pouring out of us until there were no more tears left to cry. Dear Molly, if you don't answer this message, I will leave you alone. I am very sorry for taking the photo. I hope your mum is feeling better. Please can we start again? Love, Ella. It was Saturday morning, only three days since Molly and her mum had left. In the ambulance. I can't go, I said from my bed. It's a stupid idea. I think you should, Mum said, standing in the doorway. I've checked my wait visiting times. I can't talk to her. Anyway, I sent a message and she never replied. How could Mum even ask me to the hospital? I shouldn't be anywhere near Molly. Never. No way. She may not have seen her message. She may not have seen your message. Why didn't Mum just leave me alone? She won't want me. Stop nagging me. Ella, that girl's on her own. No imagine, imagine how you would feel. I could imagine it. It all felt bad and wrong and terrible. And the most terrible bit of it was me. I humped and rolled and lay still. I couldn't imagine it. It all felt bad and wrong and terrible and the most terrible bit of it was me. I humped and rolled and lay still. I closed my eyes. Well, Jack and I will go, Mum said. 
My door swished shut. I heard Mum's feet on the stairs. She called, Jack! I jumped off the bed. But you and Jack really know Molly, I called, following her down. Mum had her keys in her hand. You'd better come with us then. Just get dressed and put your trainers on. We drove into the car park. The least you can do is say hello, Mum said. The hospital felt hot and stuffy. There were so many corridors I couldn't imagine ever getting out. It smelled of cleaning and medicine. Nurses and patients walked around looking for where they were supposed to be. As I followed Mum and Jack, I kept thinking about how strange the hospital must be to Molly's mum after being inside a mountain maze. My feet felt heavy. I had lead boots. I had lead boots. Dread boots. I had a lot to say to Molly and nothing at all, all at once. When I got to the ward, we weren't allowed to see Molly's mum at all because she was ill. Because she was too ill. Molly was sitting outside the room on a blue plastic chair in her brown tracksuit. Molly's long legs swung as she stared through the grey glass. I stopped dead. Come on, Mum said. Hello, Molly. Jack called, Molly! And dashed towards her. Molly turned. She didn't smile at us. Molly crossed the wide grey floor. I kept behind her. My insides turned to jelly. A nurse came out to shush Jack for a moment. I saw the side of a bed and a hand and tubes going down inside it. Machines beeped. The door closed. I was only saying hello, Jack whined. We stood there. Mum spoke to the nurse. In isolation, yes. Very worried. Out of danger, yes. Yes. Can I take Molly down to the cafe? Mum waved towards Molly. Good idea. <clears throat> Good idea, the nurse said. I'll keep an eye on your mum, Molly. Molly nodded and followed Mum and Jack. I came last. I remembered how Molly seemed to carry silence with her when she came for tea. Last weekend. Before, just before, Mum bought us drinks and biscuits in the cafe. There was a children's play area outside. Mum drifted over to us. To, Molly drifted over to us to sit on a bump shaped like a bee. It stuck out of a sort of coil to make the bee bounce. I don't think Molly was expecting that. She wobbled and fell off. Jack got on the one next to her, an ant with waving legs. He wobbled it, holding the front pair of feelers, plunging down and up, wobbling and bouncing. Molly climbed back on hers. Mine's a flying one, Jack shouted. He and Molly bounced. I watched. Then Jack fell off and went to get a biscuit. I climbed on his. Did you get my message? I asked Molly, sitting there, holding on. Don't talk about it, Molly said. She bounced on the bee and the bright sun poured on her face. We both bounced. Jack rushed over, shouting, Are you on the moon yet? Molly smiled at him, nearly. I climbed off and let him have a go again. I collected drinks for Molly and me from the picnic table where Mum sat, flicking through messages on her phone. I flip-flopped down to sit beside Molly. I'm really sorry, I said. Chapter 24 I know everything about you. Dear Dad, that's a big, big shame that you can't have a holiday from being in prison. 
I didn't know you were sorry. I didn't know you felt bad about the stealing every minute of every day. Don't worry, Dad. You've got in a tank. You got in a tangle. I've been in a tangle too, Dad. Lots of love, Ella. The days passed slowly. I sat at, in the class on my own with Bryony, ignoring everyone and visiting Molly at a hospital after school. There are lots of kinds of stubborn. I found a new kind inside me. I ate my sandwiches outside every day on the wall. I ignored Lydia's group. I pretended they were invisible. I, st I even stopped wearing the hot green jumper when our classroom was warm and left my arms bare. One lunchtime, as I walked past them all on my way outside, Rachel called out in front of everyone, Ella, is Molly okay? I stopped. Lydia, Rachel, Sophie, Hannah, no, Sorry, Lydia, Rachel, Sophie, Immy, Hannah, Zing. They were all there. Molly's all right, I said. Someone said her mum's in the hospital, Immy said. Yes, I said. She's very ill. Oh, silence. Molly's mum's had pneumonia, pneumonia, I said. What's that, said Lydia. It's an illness. It means it's hard to breathe. Molly had been trying to look after her. What in that mess? Lydia spat out, the, almost spat the words. Everyone looked at Lydia. Why are you always so mean about Molly? Rachel asked. It's because of the art competition, Emmy said. It's because Molly won it, won it, isn't it? Last term. I don't know what you mean, snapped Lydia. I looked round the group. An art competition before I arrived. It was all starting to make sense. Hot anger rose inside me. So Molly's dad's accident last year. Did you all know about that? Yes, the teachers told the whole class, Rachel said. I gaped at Rachel. You mean there was never a mystery? Everyone was waiting for Lydia now. I think you're all being horrid, Lydia said. Angry words burst out of me. You made me keep investigating just to hurt Molly. Lydia had a cold smile. There's plenty more people I could hurt if I wanted to, Ella Mackay. She pointed her long white finger at me. I know lots of things about you, don't forget. My hands clenched. No, you don't. Not really. A tray clattered on the other end of the lunch hall. I gulped. I felt all eyes on me. My dad got put in prison for doing a bad thing. My voice came out really loud. He's really sorry for what he did. He feels bad every day. A chair scraped. Silence. My dad made a mistake. He's making up for it. People should say sorry when they do a bad thing. I stared into Lydia's blue, blue eyes. Don't you think a person should say sorry when they do a bad thing? Lydia. 
I stared around Lydia's open mouth, friends. Lydia looked down at the table, her smile quivering. I realised I didn't care. I'd said the secret, mine and mum's and Jack's. She couldn't do anything to me. The thought rose up like a cheer inside me. I still have, I'll still have friends, I told her. There'll be people who don't lie and cheat. People like Molly. I headed for the door, my words roaring inside my head and plunged out into the playground, half sobbing. But then a noise came from behind me. Hey, Ella. I turned to see Emmy. Say hi to Molly for me, she said. Say I hope her mum's better soon. I nodded. Maybe you could come over for tea sometime. Emmy said, if you want to. I grinned. I'd love that. Thanks. Once Molly's mum was definitely getting better, mum, mum took me to meet her one day after school. I didn't want to, but I knew I had to. This is Ella, mum. Molly said. A woman in a pale blue dressing gown was in a hospital chair looking out of the window. Her dark hair was brushed and she had a wide pale face like Molly's. She looked sleepy, not scary. Molly was holding on to her mum's hand. Hello Ella, her mum said softly. A wave of hot shame pulled me down. What could I say? Molly stroked her mum's forehead. Ella's the one who called the ambulance. Her voice was flickery and gentle, as if they both spoke a special, rare language. She turned back to me. Mum gets tired, she said. My own mum was waiting in the doorway. Now she came in and said hello. I'm so glad our girls are getting to know each other. You shouldn't be. I'm a bad person who nobody trusts, I thought. But Mum got a, put her arm round me and beckoned Jack from the corner. Of, from the corner. Jack zoomed in, making his aeroplane noise. Molly's mum smiled. Can we play football? He asked Molly. Please. Mum laughed. Jack, it's a hospital. I'll play carefully, he said. And then we were all laughing, apart from Jack, who stood there in the middle of the room asking, What's so funny? He stomped his foot. His face went naughty and I am naughty and cross and I thought, Oh, no! But then Molly suddenly said, While Mum's in the hospital, would you help to look after my rabbit, Jack? Jack's face looked up, lit up like Christmas. Really? Chapter 25. Whisper it to me. Hi, Dad. My skin is bad. Mum says I'm scratching a lot at night and she's making me wear the scratch mitts again. Mrs. Reynolds says the Queen wore gloves for her garden pot, wears gloves for her garden parties at Buckingham Palace, but those parties are in the daytime, and anyway, my mitts are brown and splotchy, and they smell really yuck like vinegar because of all the cream. I do all the things like the long sleeves and the washing and the soaking and the creams and all the food things. I hate not having ice cream when we go out. Every time we have the soya one at tea time, I say I should have double because I've missed so many and mum laughs, but I should. The doctor said my skin was angry. I keep thinking about eczema being a shouting thing. But I think eczema is more like insects burrowing inside and 
trying to escape, I would like to unzip my skin and hang it up so I could go to bed without it. So all the itches would leave me alone. Then I'd be a skeleton. I'm going to tell that to Jack because he really likes skeletons. Sometimes Mum holds my hand still and says, You've scratched enough. But it isn't like that. Even if I scratched all my skin off, I think a little itch would find me. Love, Ella. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Molly was going to stay at our house while her mum was in the hospital. We made a bed in, a, in my room for her in my room on the spare mattress. There wasn't any extra space to walk around. We were like peas in a pod, mum said. The first night, mum came in and kissed us both good night. Not too much chatting or you'll never get up in the morning. The light flicked off and all the shapes in the room disappeared. I snuggled down. Molly was, I was pleased Molly was here in the quietness. I was pleased Molly was here in the quietness. I listened to the water pipe, pipes making their clanking noises on the landing. Excuse me, I just need to take a mouthful of breakfast. Mm. Mm. But then a sniffing noise started. I listened. It turned to long, choking sobs. Molly, Molly, I whispered, are you all right? Some words I couldn't hear. Mum, something about mum. What's wrong? Your mum kissed me. She hugged me. I'll tell her not to, it's all right. But Molly was sobbing again. I don't want her to stop. She, nobody, nobody kisses me good night. I stared down into the dark where Molly's voice was. So your mum doesn't know. I always check she's okay. Then I just go to bed on my own. Oh, I could pick a cold picture came into my head. Molly lying still in her bed in her house. A big gulp rose inside me. Mum always tucks me in. She doesn't really tuck, she just calls it tucking us in and holds me, smelling of mum, her jumper, her hair. Oh Molly, I'm sorry your mum isn't... Your mum can't... Molly's voice again. I think Mum got too sad when Dad died. I think that made her go strange. I was scared sometimes. I don't think she knew what she was going to do. She was like Mum, but somewhere else. I didn't tell anyone at school. I didn't want Mr Hales knowing things. I might He might think Mum was mad. She wants she isn't mad, Ella. Molly's voice turned into a whisper. Sometimes I did think she was mad, like when she made a big mess in the kitchen and I got back from school and there were eggs everywhere and I got so angry and shouted at her and she just said, I wanted to make you a cake, Molly. I wanted it to be waiting when you got back from school, but I couldn't make the eggs work. I think the sadness was just making her brain wrong. Molly was silent. The clanking noise from the pipes had stopped and our house was very quiet. 
It seemed to wrap my, itself around me, warm. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't bear thinking about the cake Molly's mum had tried to make. But she's getting better now, I asked. Molly sighed. The tablets make her sleepy. She still cries a bit, but she holds my hand and looks at me more, looks at me, and it's like she can really see me now when she asks about school and my art. Before she had me, Mum used to do art too. She was a painter. That's why you love art? Yes, I don't know why Mum stopped. I'd like her to start again and be happy. Lying talking in the dark beside Molly was like talking to myself. I couldn't see her listening. I've got something to tell you too, I said. My dad's in prison. He stole some money. It was easy to tell Molly. When he first got in trouble, Mum went up to my school and talked to the headmistress and I had to look after Jack in the playground and I kept wondering what they were saying. I knew it was bad though. I could hear Mum and Dad arguing when I was in bed. How could you do something so stupid? Mum kept saying and Dad was crying. I did it for us. Did you tell anyone? Molly asked. No, only my friend Grace. I said that Dad was going to be in a big court case and it just... And she mustn't tell anyone and she just said, don't worry. Jack, Dad kept hugging me and Dad, Jack so much. Who did he steal from? The bank where he worked. The court was to decide how to punish him. It took a whole week. Dad said he was guilty right from the start. He said he needed the money to pay someone back and he hadn't told anyone, not even Mum. I knew all my te I think all my teachers knew by then. I hated them asking, Are you all right, Ella? And your dad got taken away. He's been in prison for six months, but they're keeping him for three years. Molly was quiet. When Dad went, a man jumped out from between the car and our, the cars on our road, waving a long camera when we'd only just got back from the supermarket. Mrs Mackay, do you have any comment? And Mum screamed at me to get back Jack inside and shut the curtains. So we ran and Mum was grabbing shopping bags and slamming the car doors and the man was rushing round taking pictures. It was like a hunt. And when we all sat at the bottom, when he'd gone, we all sat at the bottom of the stairs while Mum cried. I thought it was just Dad who did the bad thing. But I think it was some people thought it was Mum or they wanted to watch us and see if we were bad too. And when I was going to school, Mrs Griffiths opposite came out on her step and shook her doormat and stared at me really long and hard without saying hello and smiling. It was horrible just looking down at my shoes till I heard her door slam and Mum shouted at Grandma, I'm not staying here with everyone staring at us. I've not seen a penny of that money. I stopped. The secret was gone, all smashed and gone away. I stared into the dark where Molly was. I write to my dad, I told Molly. I'll tell him you're my new friend. Molly's gentle voice came again. Do you go and visit him? Mum doesn't want us to. Molly sighed, but he's your dad. I lay in the quiet dark and thought about Dad, his face in a happy grin, running, Dad running round the garden with Jack on his shoulders, Dad chasing me on the beach on holiday. Now, we'll leave it there for today because I've kept you long enough. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching, subscribing, for commenting. It really makes my day when you do. And I'll see you soon with Toya for another story.
Can you wave to her? Good girl. Bye-bye, everybody. Cheerio.